You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis show. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. Um, today, I've got all my guests in on time. And I'm just going to go straight to my guests so that we have the discussion. Uh, so forgive me. I'm sure that you always are waiting for my take. I actually have a take, and I'll share it online for you. Um, you I have uh, concerns. I put up a post, and I ask people who are working in public uh, offices to tell me what difficulties they encounter because the deputy uh, special prosecutor uh, nominee uh, spoke about having to you know, use her own money to buy A4 sheets and do things for her office. And I got loads of messages, particularly from people who work in NADMO, the Attorney Generals, the Shraj, and the NCCE, and the NCC in particular. These are the agencies, in institutions that are supposed to uh, teach us and educate us on our civic responsibilities and duties and all of that. Unfortunately, it does appear that there is a deliberate attempt by politicians to starve them of, of, of funds and to cripple them. And in the end, it doesn't help. I have questions about what the media is doing and what you and I are doing to ensure that they get the necessary funding to be able to do the job that they have to do. These days, they are small boys, and I use that. Small boys sitting on radio every day, insulting the elderly in the name of political <coughs> commentary, insulting even the president every day in the name of political commentary. And you ask what is going on. There are abuses, abuses, egregious abuses going on in our villages and towns and even in the cities. And you ask what is going on. You know how our culture is being decapitated. And you ask what is going on. These entities need to be funded properly to execute their mandate. Otherwise, our democracy is in trouble. I'll share that with you um, in due course on myjawonline.com. But my guests are here. <clears throat> and this one, we're going to have a very interesting discussion. You will enjoy it. Um, my guest, Abdul Malik Kubako, is editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Dr. Richmond Echeahine is banking consultant and CEO, Universal Capital Management. Kojo Oponkruma is MP of Fwasi Ayurebi and Deputy Minister for Information. Isaac Adomo is MP, Bulga Central, and member, Finance Committee of Parliament. And this is how I start. We want to see if we can put an end to the controversy about the cost of the interoperability uh, previously and what has been uh, gotten today. Dr. Baumia announced that what we have now is for 4.5 million Ghana cities only, and that previously it was to cost the country $18 million. 4.6 billion Ghana cities. What are the facts? But let's start. What exactly is this animal that we all have difficulty pronouncing? Interoperability. Last year, we started the discussion with this interview. Listen. Different kinds of interoperability. But I think Bank of Ghana was going for a broader level of interoperability. Right. So you could have wallets to wallets, which is really you being able to send from one mobile money provider to the other. Mm -hmm. You could have between bank accounts and mobile money wallets. And then you could also have a variance where, um, you know, the POSs at retail points and whatnot can also accept payments from either your phone or whatnot, right? So it's really harmonizing all the different platforms to be able to receive all forms of payments. Okay. The, the telecoms companies, are uh, not excited about this. They have actually written, and among their complaints, they are suggesting that this is just money we are seeking to waste. Mm -hmm. They seem to suggest that there are already existing platforms for interoperability in the mobile money <coughs> space. So why this? Do you agree with them? Well, they, they, have, they certainly have a point there um, in terms of the fact that today, if you look at uh, GIFs, they provide some level of connectivity. If you look at um, ExpressPay, SlidePay, and Sano, Cornet, all these institutions have actually built interconnecting um, infrastructure to facilitate payments. 
However, they are currently looking at some elements of interoperability and not the broader interoperability. So in terms of what the provider, you know, the, the party that Bank of Ghana has contracted to support with interoperability, I think there are issues in there in terms of what the full scope of that project is supposed to be and, and whatnot. But in terms of basic, you know, sending money from MTN to Tigo and whatnot, but actually going into your wallet, I think that is what the industry is referring to, which is it already exists to some extent. But with that being said, we also have to recognize the fact that Bank of Ghana being the regulatory authority, this is squarely within its ambit, and they would want to see this done a bit more effectively, especially to be able to lower the cost. Today, technically, you could send money from network A to network B. It will, it will be received as a voucher and is much more expensive. Mm. But if you're able to harmonize it, you're able to drop costs a lot lower to make it easier for you know, people in the bottom of the pyramid to also be able to become financially included and have access to this. We've seen instances in, most, in some countries where they have a very good setup, but low-value payments cannot be afforded on those platforms, and so people continue to be financially excluded, whereas those who already have access continue to enjoy more services. I've been reading about is it Kenya, uh, Nigeria, and more importantly, South Africa, and obviously that suggests to me that we are, we are late. And for those who observed, I think this industry had been quite somewhat ignored in, you know, by the public for a very long time because it wasn't being successful, mm. to be honest. From the 2009 coming in, it was just a loss. But very recently, the central bank, through its convening authority, has essentially facilitated a process which involved the different players collaborating, and that began to achieve some major successes, mm. including putting out the electronic money issuer guideline, which we believe, to a large extent, was very, very robust and was actually a model that was being replicated in other countries. That's one. Now, some of these countries that you mentioned, South Africa, for instance, is a more advanced economy. So they're achieving these forms of digital payments in a way that continues to exclude the low-value transactions, which typically are needed to be able to lift the poor out of financial exclusion. Mm. So that's why you see an emphasis get out of that market. You look at Nigeria, for instance, mm. their regulatory framework does not really enable this, so mobile money is still far behind in Nigeria, mm. whereas they've been more successful with their cards. And in Kenya, I mean, Kenya was the original market, mm. and so they've been more successful. But I think from a Ghana market perspective and from a central banking and industry perspective as well, the central bank needs to continue to facilitate, not really, you know, sort of dictate and whatnot. The central bank needs to facilitate, and I think to a large extent that's what they try to do. Mm. Then the, reg the, the industry needs to collaborate, which as well continues to be the case. Uh, I mean, you've, you've heard a lot of discussion this week about the cost of payment system, especially this interoperability switch. And, 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 and it, it gets, I mean, when I first became aware of this. It was a situation where three companies apparently bid for the right to provide payment system, right? The interoperability, payment system of interoperability. One company bid 14 million Ghana CDs to provide that payment system of interoperability. Another company, for the same scope of work, bid 5 million Ghana CDs. And yet a third company for the same scope of work built four, bid 4.6 billion dollars. And guess who won? 4.6 billion Ghana CDs won that bid. And, and, and what are we trying to provide? Interoperability. And we have been able to do it for 4.5 million dollars instead of the 1 billion dollars. And we have become the leading country in interoperability in Ghana. So what other scope were you thinking about? All right, so we got a bit of education and comparative analysis from uh, Kwame Opong, who is a digital uh, financial consultant. Uh, and that was on the 2nd of February 
2017 when the matter came up and we began to discuss it. And this week has been interesting. Uh, on that show, Kwekubako was on, and Kwekubako has been quoted around. Um, some people who have problems with him has been, have been circulating what he had to say on that day to, as a defense <laughs> for their case. Now, you heard also Dr. Baumia uh, at the launch of this particular facility and speaking about it and making comments that people have said he is wrong about. Now, I'm going to start with my guests here in the studio, but we will shortly also let you hear what a former Deputy Bank of Ghana uh, feels about what Dr. Baumia said. That is Dr. Johnson Asiyama. And um, we'll hear from Achi Hesse, who is the CEO of the GIFs, who are in charge of uh, this uh, interoperability. Now, uh, start with you, could you? And very briefly, if, um, <coughs> if, if my mom, who is sitting in the village, wanted to <coughs> understand what this interoperability was about, <coughs> how could you get down to her so that she appreciates it? Because she knows what is Momo. Well. Uh -huh. uh, Samson, good morning. Good, good morning, morning to uh, my colleagues and to your uh, viewers and listeners. Um, so if I were to explain this in the simplest of terms, I would say that there are various um, commercial platforms, some that use cash, some use checks, some use um, what we would probably call electronic money. Um, some use mobile money. And usually as technology develops, and I say currency <coughs> is mirrored in various ways, you've got to find platforms that allow transactions of these currencies. So at first when you had calories, you just, or even at first when you had butter, you do butter. When you had calories, you now exchange calories, etc. When you had cash, you change cash. Right. Now you get to a platform where you have banking and you have other electronic financial services. So you must have platforms that allow you to exchange currency. And usually these platforms um, operate within themselves. So you have a platform on which, let's say, you can clear checks between banks. You have a platform on which mobile money transactions can take place. You have another platform on which, let's say, banks have to do settlements, direct debit transfers of monies to themselves. Okay. These are all um, platforms on which you are transferring, let me say, money mm -hmm. or currency. Now, you get to a level where to improve financial inclusion, or why it's important to improve financial inclusion is that you find that there's a segment of the society that is comfortable, let's say, mobile money, right. like your mother, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Some people are doing very heavy transactions, transferring hundreds of thousands of CDs. Some are dealing in checks. Some are doing international transactions, visa, etc. So you need to make these platforms interoperable so that now I can move money from my mobile phone, not just within my network, but from my network to another network, and from my network into a bank account, or from my network onto eSwitch, for example. So interoperability is putting together a system that allows each of these transfer platforms to communicate one with each other. Mm. And as far back as 2007, the Bank of Ghana, in line with its mandate, because they deal with monetary policy or money, so they are responsible for ensuring that all of these exchanges are managed, came up with a way to handle it. And today we are talking about what has been the most prudent model to use. Great. Look, this... This sounds rather really simplified, in addition to what uh, Kwame Opong uh, had already uh, spoken about. So the understanding is that it's not just about you being able to do your transactions on, mob on phones, as in from one network to the other, correct? Yep. You can deal with your banks as well and other, you know, um, electronic money transaction processes? I think you're right. Uh, it is an extension of previously we were talking about the telecom systems. However, now with the interoperability, we are linking bank accounts. Mm -hmm. So we are moving from the telecos into banking. That if you have some money in your telecos account, you can move it to bank account. 
That is all that is about interoperability. It's a, it's a, a settlement, payment settlement system mm -hmm. under the Payment Act, okay. which Kwame, Honorable Kwame has said already. It started in, I think, 2003 when the law was passed that GAPS sh should develop the platform to improve settlement system. Mm -hmm. At least the banks have started with, now we have uh, dealings and everything there. So now it's time for us to include the other side, those who don't have bank account, but they also have something to do with payment. Okay. So if, you, that is if you had to stress what this means for our economy and the future of this economy, what will be the point to stress? I think the point is financial inclusion. Because currently, if you look at the World Bank stats, we're only 30% who have bank account. So now if you're able to get all these people to come in, then at least we may be able to improve the percentage to say about 60%, which is good. And from then on, there can even be in financial intermediation. We now begin to think people can now make financial intermediation, apart from the payment. The payment is only one leg. The next leg is to ensure how we can do intermediation, people moving surpluses to uh, deficit areas mm. to help us. That okay. is a very key thing. Mm. If it's only about payment and settlement, that is, would not have solved the issue. We need to bring people in so that people can have easy access to okay. funding. I'll get, I'll get Adoma to also tell us briefly about this, but could you, in a minute, what is the overall agenda in implementing this for the economy? What's the overall agenda, so like, uh, ultimately? Yeah, so like Professor Etoahin mentioned, it is not just to allow interoperability, but it is most importantly for financial inclusion. Because in this world, there will always be people who have more money than they need, and people who need more money than they have. So you must have a financial system that uh, mobilizes money from those who have more than they need. That's what we call savings. Mobilize all of it. And use that savings in lending to particularly businesses that <coughs> require more of that funding so that you create credit, inject it into parts of the economy that bring growth. Yeah. So the big agenda is to bring more people into um, the financial bracket, get more money into the system so that we can use money all around to do the various things that we need to do. And it starts, among other things, with first of all, getting these people to access the financial system. People don't go to banks because, uh, you know, for various reasons. The cost of banking services, sometimes even the bank itself and how it's been put there can scare people away depending on where they are. Mm. And so you want to introduce various platforms that allow people to get into the financial world, get their money <coughs> to move from under their beds and uh, you know, from little nooks and crannies into the financial system. Mm. And then you can build capital out of it and do a lot more out of it. That's okay. the whole idea. So um, I don't, this is to catch up with the cashless regime, which is the, the new thing that if we don't, we lag behind. And what do we lose, really? Uh, good morning to you and to my panda friend. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't given me my bonus for, <laughs> for samurai. Uh -huh. And uh, to my big brothers on the other side, and to your viewers. Uh, I think uh, financial inclusion all over the world uh, has been seen as one of the best instruments for deepening the financial sector. It is a means by which you can mobilize resources and use the players in the market to channel those resources into areas where they are best uh, required. And so to that extent, yes, it is important to, to have an interoperability. But it also means that beyond interoperability, what are the other legs that need to be pursued in order to optimize interoperability? Uh, because at the end of the day, people are not just going to have bank accounts because there's interoperability. Mm. Uh, but it simply means that if the person has a bank account and I want to put cash into my bank account, I simply can put it on my mobile money account uh, nearby and uh, download it onto my bank account. So I probably don't need to go to uh, a banking hall. Right. And so uh, it, it, it makes it a lot easier. And once the money gets into that system, chances are that you'll be able to mobilize cash outside of, of the normal uh, realm of people keeping cash on them. So that facilitates the ability to move more money uh, into the system. And once he puts the money there and he wants to engage in a transaction, chances are that he won't go to withdraw, mm. but he will do it mm -hmm. via phone. And okay. so you won't see him having to go to bank or go into a mobile money account or vendor 
to take the money. So the right. money, once it enters the system, chances are that it won't come out. <coughs> it, will, it will be circulating mm. within the platform and therefore introducing a cashless uh, system of operation. So that is a major uh, benefit. Now, okay. what this has done is that uh, previously, it is not as if bank, uh, mobile money accounts were not linked to bank accounts. No. If I had an ADB account and I was operating a mobile money uh, uh, account, most often, I, I had that linked already. So I could move money from my bank account into my mobile money account and, and, and do transactions. The challenge was that I was doing it via a particular route. So I was doing it between probably MTN and my bank account, and probably my bank account if I have another Vodafone. But if I were to make a transaction to another mobile uh, uh, money account other than the one that I have, I have subscribed, it simply meant that I have to find a way to move the money and go and put it there because I can move money from my MTN to save Vodafone. Yeah. And so even if I succeeded in moving the money onto my mobile money account, I still needed the fiscal cash to go and do that transaction uh, uh, on Vodafone. Now okay. I don't need to do that. So all of this is meant to say that you have a system that allows people to have easy access to financial services. Right. And that, that, that is the bottom Great. line. Now, Kuku, the safety that comes with the system as far as your dealing with your money is concerned. It's exciting, isn't it? Well, but I'm sure you are asking somebody who has little knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> little little, yes. little, little no, 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 no. No. <coughs> You read loads. I do. And I appreciate that. I do. Uh, I try to listen more to those who have the expertise, I mean, those with the technical competence. Mm. Uh, this is an area, and I, I'm not ashamed confessing that I'm absolutely inadequate. There. But having read all sorts of records and listening to people around, it is clear to me that in principle, everybody, all sides, not just of the political divide, but in the financial sector, everybody thinks this is a fantastic improvement right. on what already existed. Mm. I've been going through the Bank of Ghana, so the tendering documents and what the objectives were as uh, the request for proposal so right. that you get an idea mm -hmm. what exactly they were seeking to do. It is obvious that we can't modernize the Ghanaian economy without uh, this kind of infrastructure. You know? So yes, I'm open that it will not be uh, open to uh, fraudulent right. manipulation. Okay. But I say so without any real technical knowledge in terms of Factor. Forgive me, right? I mean, adequate. Don't worry. To this Don't worry. So yeah. now we get to the matters of controversy. Mm -hmm. um, was it meant to be done for $1.2 billion? Was it meant to be done for $1.2 billion and now has been done for $4.5 million? Is that what it is? Let's listen to. Dr. Johnson Siama, and uh, also um, Achi Hesse, CEO of the GIPS, and we'll come back to the studio. All that we were interested in there was that whatever system you build, even if it costs you so much, the charges that consumers will pay shouldn't be more than they are paying currently. Remember currently, if you send 100 CDs, how much did they do that? One CD. Is it one CD or 10 CDs? One CD. And so our concern was that by the time you finish your installations and everything, they should be paying less than one CD. So the cost should actually go down. You understand me? And I think that is the more, more important thing to you, isn't it? If they claim they are using 10 billion, and you are sure that whatever it is, if I'm sending money tomorrow, 100 CDs, they'll deduct 50p. You know, or even if it will be a little bit more, 1.1, 1 CD 10p or something. And yet, I can now send across, even from bank to mobile accounts, etc. I think for, from the perspective of the consumer, that is what matters. Then you want to be sure that in 15 years' time, the equipment and everything reverts to the Bank of Ghana or whoever. I think that is what is important. So in sum, what I'm saying is, it's, in a, uh, it, it's inappropriate to compare you know, an antelope and, and what? An elephant. Why? Because the characteristics are different. It's not that simplistic to just say, oh, I'm spending this on A, you would have spent this on this, and therefore so, so, and so forth. There will be a shift. 
in focus. So instead of the MNOs, uh, sorry, the fintech companies occupying the interoperable uh, 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 system or mimicking the interoperable system, it's important uh, for, for, for it to be handled by the national switch. And they, in turn, can maybe focus on downstream systems that individuals and businesses can use. It's in that regard why we have a relationship with them. We can uh, start aligning or realigning ourselves in light of developments that is currently being happening. The charge was to develop an interoperability platform that will enable seamless transfers first across mobile networks and then banks and then on e-switch accounts. No one can therefore justify how you would then add something else or claim to add something else which is not requested for and you agree that the developers should charge mind-blowing amounts for it. So if you look at the price differential between 1.2 billion and 4.5 million, that's a factor of about 267 times. So is he suggesting that the scope was 267 times bigger than the current scope? What was involved in this extra work to have justified that amount? A mere mouthing that the scope was wider means nothing. If he intends to make that claim, he will have to do better and showcase the extra scope and how it justifies the 267 times the current cost. The claim that is being made that the cost of the project is actually $300,000 is untenable. The fact is that the government of Ghana in that old transaction was literally asked to stay behind and the money was to be paid by the ordinary users and that even makes matters more suspicious and I'll explain to you why. The previous administration, acting through the Bank of Ghana, essentially what they did was that they agreed that the company Septon should charge the users of the platform. And who are the users of these platforms predominantly? These are market women, farmers, drivers, people in the lower to middle class are those who massively use these platforms that have been rolled out. Their arrangement was that the company Septon should charge these people 1.2 billion dollars. That's essentially what they did. Currently, under this new arrangement, what we have said is that government through the Bank of Ghana, through Gibbs, is paying 4.5 million dollars. And the Ghanaian at the end, this market woman, this driver, this person who predominantly uses this platform, does not need to pay a private company 1.2 billion for their profit. This is a big savings to the people of Ghana. Right. So could you I continue with you and uh, a briefly a little bit of an addition to what you have already said and to tell us whether you were being factual and speaking to the facts when you said that the cost was going to be $1.2 billion instead of what we have had now for $4.5 million dollars. Samson, thank you. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So, you know, this conversation has been reduced to one that supposes that the controversy is about the cost. I submit to you that it's not just about the cost. In fact, the first issue in contention is the policy direction. It is the choice of policy that has determined the cost options. And I'll explain to you. You have to, I don't understand. You know, we all started off by agreeing on what interoperability is and what it means for the broader economy. And as far back as around 2003, as uh, Professor Chahini mentioned, this conversation started. By 2007 May, GIPS was set up. The Bank of Ghana, the government of Ghana, took a policy decision that we will have what is the global best practice where you set up a state or a national payment platform. And they will develop the various sub-platforms and make them interoperable. So 2007, GIPS was set up, and they started. They rolled out eSwitch. They rolled out the um, ACH platform, the direct debit platform. You know, there was a time when you couldn't transfer bulk sums of money before 11 AM. Mm -hmm. They have rolled all of those ones out. They work perfectly. Um, they now then proceeded to develop other electronic payment platforms that allowed ATMs, that allowed point of sale terminals, that allowed the e-commerce terminals, and it was going on. What happened in this instance was that there was an alteration to the policy structure 
when it got to the mobile network operators. So a decision was made that when it comes to the mobile network operators, let us privatize it. And that is how come you had this request for restricted tender to allow these three private companies to put in a bid mm. and to purport to literally do what Gibbs had been doing. Let me break it down. So you have a national restaurant that has a menu. They are doing jollof and wache and red red. And now it gets to, let's say, yam and palava sauce. That needs to be added to the menu. And the policy decision is made that instead of just adding that to that, then let us go set up a new restaurant. Because that new restaurant says that they can do a few more dishes in addition to the palava sauce. This is essentially what happened. Now, it is in that process that which that other controversy comes up, that this company put in a bid that they can do the job at a cost of $1.2 billion, and that they should be allowed to recoup their money. So the state, the Bank of Ghana, or the government of Ghana, ought not to pay them. They will build it, operate it, but then they should be allowed to charge and recoup their money to the tune of $1.2 billion dollars. Now it's come up as a question of contention that you don't find 1.2 billion dollars in, um, in the agreement. Fact. There's a copy of the agreement. Mm -hmm. But when you go to um, the charges section of the agreement, and if you give me permission, <coughs> lawyer Isankuma has done an interesting rendition on it online. And I, I'm sure as your viewers and listeners search the net, they would, they would also be able to read for themselves and get an understanding. Let me just read you a bit of the charges shadow. It says that the operator subject to the prior approval of the regulator will charge a tariff for the use of the Ghana retail payment infrastructure. That's what they gave them um, to do. The tariff approved under clause 5.1 shall ensure recovery of the investment of the operator together with reasonable return on investment as provided in the financial proposal submitted by the operator. The parties acknowledge and agree that the operator is entitled to make a profit. Then go to 5.4. It says, unless otherwise agreed upon by the parties, the tariff included in the financial proposal shall be deemed approved and applicable upon execution of this agreement. And then it goes further to say, the operator shall, subject to prior approval of the regulator, be entitled to review the tariff annually to reflect changes in economic circumstance, foreign exchange rates, etc. Then you ask the other question, so what were they asked to do? Let me take you to section 2.2 of the um, agreement. And I've highlighted it here um, for our benefit. It says that the operator agrees, subject to terms and conditions of this agreement, and the tender, to build, own, and operate what is called the Ghana Retail Payment System Infrastructure for the term of this agreement. And the term is 15 years plus a possible term an integrated and interoperable electronic and mobile payment clearing and settlement system for the clearing and settlement of all mobile payments and other financial. Recall that there's Gibbs already doing all of the other financial. So and other financial and retail electronic payments in Ghana to participants and customers. So what this agreement sought to do was to shift the policy and now award to this company the power to Literally, A, replicate what Gibson was doing, and then add to it this mobile payments platform. And then you find the financial proposal attached. That's where you find the breakdown of the amount of money that comes up to the about 4.6. And let me give you the summary sheet. Mm. They said they were going to spend on site infrastructure about 488 million Ghana cities, license fee and cost 108 million Ghana cities, equipment 153 million Ghana cities, other office equipment which is different from the equipment that they've just stated. Uh, 14 million, motor vehicles, 134 million, office furniture, 18 million, office computers and software, 9 million, then general and admin expenses, 3.7 billion, totaling 4.6 billion CDs. And by this, they are being given permit to recoup it from the users of the platform, which I was explaining predominantly are our, you know, middle and, to lower. And did you say the tenure was for 15 years? If you look at the terms of the contract, trade two, it says the term shall be 15 years from the commercial operation date with an option to renew upon expiration at the option of the operator, not even the Bank of Ghana. So the operator can elect that 
My 15 years has ended, but I'm exercising the right to extend by another 10 years. It doesn't even give the Bank of Ghana an opportunity to vary this term. It's at the option of the operator. So effectively, minimum 15, um, maximum 25 years. And this is the package that was put together at this price. Now, bear in mind, as I mentioned earlier, there's a Gibbs that has done all of these things already. Mm. And the only new thing, and they keep rolling them out. There's a, there's a reason I ask that. And why I ask that, I'll show you uh, shortly. Number one, that when the matter became an issue because uh, Val's Intel, the company that was aggrieved, uh, made a petition to the to the is it the BNI or is it Yoko? Yoko. Yeah. They did their findings, yes. and when they finished, yes. among other things, they said that the contract price for this procurement is 0, 0.00, as stated in under cost of contract. Mm -hmm. Hence, it fell within the uh, governor's approval limits. Mm -hmm. Now, let me link up something here for you. Which means that uh, there's part no of what finding payment. Right. Yes. Then they proceeded to also say that... Uh, here again under cost of contract they proceeded to say the Bank of Ghana is not expected to pay the amount in question that we are talking about 4.6 billion yeah. to shift and switch systems limited the company that won the contract instead the company is expected to invest the said amount in the project over a period of 25 years but this is the point I'm coming to. So, so who, who is getting it wrong here? Well, this is the point I'm coming to. If you look at the contract, the contract says that they have a 90-day period within mm -hmm. which to fulfill their conditions precedent and roll it out. And they are going to, for the term of the contract, the 25 years applies to the terms of the contract, recoup their money. And they actually do their own cash flows where for, for that 25-year period they will recoup, or at least for the 15-year period, they will recoup this uh, $1.2 billion. Now, the reason for which this figure itself is it's, it's a bit exciting and strange within this context is that, like I mentioned, you have a Gips that is doing everything else minus the mobile component. Mm. And a Gips that is already rolling out all of those mobile, uh, um, all of those other electronic components, as I mentioned, ATMs, etc. You recall uh, initially the banks were using the um, magnetic strip cards that led to a lot of fraud oh, cases, yeah. and they had to now go onto the Gips system with the chip, which is now, you know, help them solve a lot. So they are doing all of these things. Mm. And if you ask, for example, how much does it cost to build a switch? Multimedia is an independent station. Run a check. Um, the ECOWAS subregion has a switch. All the subregions have switches. Various countries have switches. They use the kind of technology that is being talked about even in this particular contract. Mm. The kind of service that they are talking about. Check. You will not build a switch, and if you check what has been built with GIPS and all that they have done so far, just minus this thing that is to be added onto it, yeah. they haven't spent over hundred million dollars. Okay, so I'm coming to my point. Yeah. So you get to a point where you look at this whole arrangement, and you want to ask yourself, should this be reviewed or not? And the government went through the processes. The Bank of Ghana went through the processes. It was reviewed and legally terminated, and now we've been able to. Go back to the old police proposition that says that the national payment platform right. do this. And all they asked for was a re-injection of about $4.5 million. And let me just clarify. That $4.5 million is not for um, the mobile component only. Indeed, it is for an upgrade of their systems, a bit of infrastructure. Okay, so, so you've answered my next question. It does a lot more okay. than that. You've answered my next question. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you're saying that when the uh, former uh, second deputy uh, Johnson Isiama suggested that all the states or the Bank of Ghana's commitments financially was only 300,000 Ghana CDs. He is not correct about that. And again, that the 4.6 billion uh, Ghana CDs was, in fact, for a period of 15, 15 plus and 10. not 25 years. Yeah, 15 plus 10. Okay. Interesting. Um, Isaac, mm. from your own reading of the documentations, the contract documents, and 
whatever is available to us so far. Now there's, there's a lot of information that we are reading. Is this position the factual position? Uh, something. I'm very surprised at these kinds of analysis because they just don't add up. Let me tell you one thing. And for the documents start. don't lie. Oh. He's read from the documents. He's misreading the documents, and I'll explain to you <laughs> okay. why. Policy. I mean, every government has a right to determine policy. And so you don't impose your government's policy on another government. So clearly, there's nothing wrong with any government pursuing a different policy. That's one. Two. It must make sense. Before yes, you I get agree. To two, I'm coming to that. That the you fact have that set up a state I, 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 entity I am coming. I am to coming. run a setting product. Samson, Samson, if you and allow me. And then suddenly, you Samson, take, away, Samson, you take it Samson, away from it. If you allow you, me, you, you if you allow it. me, I'm coming to Gibbs. Okay, go ahead. You see, this project was not to reinvent things that are in the system. The banks themselves even have their payment system. You are not contracting somebody to come and develop a new payment system for banks. And yet those banks have to be able to integrate their system to a platform. So nobody should be creating the impression that Gibbs is already doing something and the contract was to reinvent the things that Gibbs has done. Because what this has just done is upgrade <laughs> systems in order to be able to be able to talk to a platform. It's a platform you are developing, which is supposed to be the platform that then allows the existing platform to communicate. That is the scope. The scope was not to come and develop new systems. And as it is, this new transaction has not developed the existing systems that were already there. It is to allow interoperability. It is not to de de develop new systems and then integrate them. So that is the first point you have to understand. It is to make sure that existing systems are interoperable. And so the fact that somebody had already developed those systems is neither here nor there. It is to develop a separate platform that allows communication among these platforms. That is the, the second point I want to make. Look, if you are running a project, any project, and you decide that you want to do your cash flows for the next 25 years, and you decide that the service charge for that project, which actually are the revenue flows for the next 25 years, amount to $1.2 billion, 25 years. Anybody with a passing knowledge of finance, if you are sitting here in 2018 and you want to determine the, the revenue flows for the next 25 years, you don't pick nominal value in 25 years and say that is the cost of the project. You do a present value analysis to determine today how much is 25, how much is 1.2 billion worth today. Then you can compare that to current figures. Or what you do is to compound those figures to the future of 25 years and compare them in 25 years. So for somebody with a passing knowledge of finance to pick values for the next 25 years and say that is the cost of a project is clearly disingenuous. But let what me, does the schedule but let me say? Make the point. Let me by, make the point. By the breakdown, if by you, the if, breakdown, yes. by the breakdown, yes. the cost as regards their investment. No, let me come. Let me As come. regards your investment, yes. that is the cost. They do the breakdown and they give you, if you a are, total if, if you of allow 4 me, If you billion. allow me, Kojo picked summary figures, which is an aggregation of 25 years' cost. And that is where the disingenuity comes. An aggregation of 25 years' costs. You have just developed a project for $4.5 million. That is your capex, your capital cost. Why? Are the vehicles supposed to be put in the, in the, in, in the software? The vehicles are for operational purposes for the next 25 years. Have you shown us with the 4.5 that you have incurred now? What will be the vehicle cost for running the project for 25 years? You have excluded that. But you have picked somebody's projection of the operational expenditures for the next 25 years. You have excluded that. The renewal of licenses. Are there any subcontract arrangement between gates and other entities to provide service? And how much is that costing? And what are the annual renewal of those facilities? He hasn't <coughs> put it there, but he says it costs 4.5. And that has to be for the next 25 years. We don't have that cost from government. The employees that are going to be managing this project are going to be paid for the next 25 years. Somebody has indicated that cost. You have it indicated. You say his own is expensive. The cost of 
uh, uh, running the operation, the administrative and other costs for the next 25 years after you have bet your capex. You haven't indicated them, and yet you say it cost us 4.5. And you are picking somebody who has given you a comprehensive cost for the next 25 years, which includes the capital cost and that of the operational cost to arrive at a figure in 25 years. You have picked just your initial capital cost because if you were to run the project by, uh, by, 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 by septum, you will not be incurring $4.5 million. So run $4.5 million in the next 25 years and see whether the value will still be $4.5 million. That is basic finance. And you say that the cost is $4.5 million. If you were to run the project by gifts, you will not be paying renewals. You will not be buying vehicles for operational activities. You will not be spending $4.5 million for monitoring of the project. You will not be incurring costs to pay wages and salaries of employees of Gibbs who will be running the project for the next 25 years. Anybody with a passing knowledge of finance will do a proper appraisal of the project. And that is why we do what we call uh, uh, the appraisal of the project in order to determine net present values. So I indicate my flows. Kojo, are they going to, people going to assess the project, uh, the, the facility for free because government has paid 4.5 million for it? And since he has Let me make no. Name. I'm not asking you to respond. It's ah, a rhetoric question. Don't worry. It's a rhetoric question. Yes, yes, yeah, right. you make your notes. It's, it's, a, it's, a, rhetoric, so it's a rhetoric question. Don't no, answer. no, no, it's not. I, I am you. saying that. I am <laughs> saying that the people are now going to pay 2.5 instead of 1.5 to use the facility, which is more expensive. You've built into it. Sorry, sorry, explain. You're saying that. When, when, what, gifts, what has been when, built when now? was going to do it, mm. the charge on that per volume was going to 1.5. Now, with this government's activity, the ones that the market women and the code that they are crying for now would have paid 1.5 to access the service. With this one, they are now paying 2.5 to access the service. You have built in an additional 3 billion, 3 billion of cost to be paid by the service user. You haven't told us that. In addition to all of this, you just saw uh, uh, Franklin Kujo yesterday indicate that there is a $4.5 million contract given to a Haiti company to assist in monitoring the revenue assurance of this interoperability. Who is going to bear that cost? Have they told us that one? Was the Bank of Ghana going to incur $4.5 million to monitor revenue assurance? So you are not telling us your cost. So as far as the cost of this project is concerned, Capex, you just spend Capex 4.5, you go to sleep, and the project will run. Clearly, this is disingenuous. And I feel very sad that this is coming from very senior people who understand finance. And I, can, I, I feel very sad because, you see, in this country, let's be honest with ourselves. If you want to introduce another project or another process, do a complete project appraisal. Do all your flows, both revenue and expenditure and your Capex. Do the other ones also his flows, revenue and expenditures. And do a net present, because it is not finance to pick nominal values in 20 years and compare them to present value of 2018. It is never done in finance. And for anybody to do that, he needs to learn finance. And but, I'm saying but, that. By your casual estimate, that. by a casual estimate, if you were taking this new product done at 4.5. Uh, million dollars. 4.669. And this is uh, the schedule that they sorry. put together. Um, this one, if you were to look at it in the manner you have looked at the previous, you know, um, one, yeah. for 25 years, yeah. roughly what would that have given us? You if, mean the current one? Yes. Unfortunately, they are not telling you the cost. <laughs> that, is the, that is the cash word. You see, in the previous one, you are not going to look for $4.5 million up front. That's right. You have looked for it now. So in terms of cash flow analysis, you are already negative $4.5 million. It, nobody wants to start with a $4.5 million and say that that's an advantage. The second one is that the expenditures that will be incurred to, not operate, or to then uh, uh, optimize the use of that $4.5 million, we don't know. And somebody has given you what it will cost him over the next 25 years, you are using it to compare to your capex. And this capex, I can assure you, these are not all the capex. <coughs> over 25 years, you incur additional capex. You incur additional cost of computers. No computer can run for 25 years. 
you replace some of them. But so in the even, old one, they have put all of exactly. that together. And so even your ongoing replacement of equipment and capital expense, the pickups he's mentioning, how many years will a pickup run? Probably two, three, four years. So they are talking about even after depreciating and replacing for the next 25 years, this is what he's going to incur. You, even the cost of the car that the manager of gifts is using, you have, a, you have even indicated it. So this is not, look, they should go back and give us a proper cost buildup of this project so we can have a conversation. This kind of analysis. You see, Samson, I want to say something today. And I have resisted saying this for a very long time. If your main focus when you make a statement is to look at the political impact of your statement, then you are not doing this country any good. And I say this because for somebody who studied the impact of structural adjustment on 1992 constitution, and calls in terms the economist, is the one always making political statements. And that's his dissertation. Structure, the impact of structural adjustment. You're referring to Dr. Baumier, Dr. Mahmoud you say, Baumier's And you say he calls himself an economist. No, he's an economist. That's what I want to okay, say. Okay, so, no, so, sorry, so yeah, I say he's an yeah, economist. Yeah, right. But I'm saying that he's an economist not because of a PhD. Structural, the impact of structural adjustment on the 1992 uh, elections is the reason all his comments are geared towards what will happen in the next election. Otherwise, anybody with a passing knowledge of finance will not do this type of analysis. So, yeah. can I and I feel now? very sad. I feel very sad that sure. we, are being sure. Compelled, sure. Mm. we are being compelled to have a conversation, mm. a conversation around something that we shouldn't even be discussing. Because as we speak today, you have summarized somebody's 20 I year have summarized. This is the original yeah, they have, yeah. Why is your own? Why is your 20 year, oh, 25 I, year summary? I am reading you don't have document. Can I respond? You don't have a 25 mm. year summary. Can I and you are comparing now? 25 right. years first to now. All, okay. First of all, the 4.6 we are talking about mm. is not the total revenue flows. I chose my words carefully. This is the cost schedule. The cost schedule that Sifton submitted. I give it to you. Read it to your audience. This is the cost schedule. Is it, is it not fair to require of you? To I'm tell I'm of coming. the cost I'm over a similar no, 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 period I'm coming to that of point. 25 years. I have four points to make. That okay. is my last point. Okay, do that quickly so that we can hear from you. I am saying that, that uh, the 4.6, as, well. as a matter Don't of worry, fact, no, you should note the what you have to say. 4.6 is the cost schedule as submitted by Septim. And they made the argument that, however, they won't charge you. Give them permission to recoup that. That's how they structured the data. Yeah, so this, this general, obviously so, is the projection so, no, no, over so the period. It is, first of all, the cost, the upfront cost they are talking about. Hey. No. This is what, no, relax. Listen. They how are how is it upfront cost? Site the contract you read. Uh -huh. Listen, site infrastructure is mm -hmm. not at year 25. Mm -hmm. They need it now. The license fees and costs, the equipment, all the things they are buying to do this. Is the cost they are stating, and, and they are saying, and you that say you need to read this together with the terms of the contract. And they are saying that they will, and the terms of the contract, a period. Okay, okay, right. So the point I'm making is that this is argument about net present value. I would have thought that when he said that, he would have quickly told us that when he finished his net present value calculation, mm -hmm. it was one million dollars. Mm. I was hoping he was going to tell us that. He hasn't done that. He hasn't done that. The onus of proof is on him to tell us that if he does his net present value calculation, contrary to what the Sifton people told us, he gets a lower figure. He starts off by admitting that, oh, as for policy, every government can do policy. But that is true. Mm. So we chose a policy direction that says that let the national payment switch do it. And when they do it, the cost will be lower because, you know, you have an economy of skill. They are doing many other things, right? And so you're able to balance the cost within that scope. You chose an alternative policy approach. And this, this is why when Dr. Siama says that don't politicize issues, it becomes laughable. Because he admits that it's a policy choice. Let me come to the next point that he makes. He says that um, we have not included renewal of other equipment and license fees over a 25-year period. He ends up by cementing our argument. This is precisely the reason why you don't go to duplicate a Gibbs. Because you have a national payments platform that has all of these things done. They pay the salaries already. He says it's not a duplication in the, in the first place. It's, but why? He starts off by admitting that, so the fact that you have Gibbs that is doing these things, does not mean you cannot have another entity that is going to literally do all of these things. I'm saying that that is why you don't set up another entity to do it. Because Gibbs is paying the salaries already. They have rented their infrastructure already. They are using their vehicles and are depreciating them already. If you go and you just add one little product to their product portfolio already, it does not therefore come at all of these 
sunk costs, which you now have to charge the people of Ghana. And he says it You was, disagree with him that it is not as simple as you it put is it, not, that it was just about adding one other well, product is, to it, because products that you already Because the national payment platform exists mm. already. Wow. So if you have one other service, you add it to it. If you choose to duplicate, if you choose to bring in a new entity, they will set up a whole new organization, charge you for everything, mm. infrastructure, mm. service. Okay. When you have an old server okay. sitting there, that can all right. do all of these transactions already. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Um, this is not justified. Can you explain yeah, in a minute for us again your, your, your answer to his, his point of duplication? It cannot be true. It, and it is never true. Let me tell you, one of these days, they should publish the appraisal project, the project's appraisal report. Why are they hiding it? Why are they, are they keeping it in their pocket? Pro project but appraisal report. Of this very new thing you have done, let me tell you something. There is a Moroccan company that has received a fatty subcontract from Gifts to do this job. Why? You think that people of Ghana, the truth, tell listen, me if you have it. Let, me, ooh, listen, let me tell him. If you set up a site infrastructure, which site infrastructure will last you 25 years with our replacements? When Gibbs has it already? Listen, mm. it is not Gibbs yes. platform. Listen, but, but, it's but, it's already, no, no, no. It's they have the true. servers, it's they never have the software, they have everything. True. Servers, servers that Gibbs have right now, it's not the servers for this platform. That's okay. why I asked you to check. And I'm saying, who's the check? Why are they using? hiding information? It's okay. an IBM server no, that no. they are using. Samson, let me, check let, me, what let, okay. Samson let, me let me deal with it. Hey, what do I buy? Let me deal with it. Let me deal with it. A minute yeah, no, to no, deal with no, the question of duplication. It's very important. It's very important to deal with an issue he has raised. You see, nobody comes to recruit costs of a project. Somebody and doesn't have a rate of return. So if you list costs, you say you have listed costs. And there's no rate of return in it. Which project appraisal is that? Did okay. you hear the charge Thank schedule you. that I read? Thank you. Co co could you, could you hold on? Cost. And could you hold on? Could you? And profit. Exactly. So, yes. how can profit be cost? So, sorry, profit is sorry. So, they gentlemen, you, you to pay the minimum. See, which gentlemen, minimum? Gentlemen, gentlemen. How can you then say that they have a return in it and you say that that is a cost? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is cash flows. Thank you. Dr. Tuahini. Okay, you've listened to the two of them. What do you have to say? And I see you've written quite a lot. Yeah, it's, it's quite incredible, and I listen to it, and I'm worried. You know, any time we're talking about strategic issues in this country, it means we politicize. And that is where, that is the thing that was leading us to, leading us I'm to... I'm not sure they've talked politics No, 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 no. To we, the facts we and are the standing figures. one side, one is standing one side. The issue must be looked critically and objectively. What I'm saying is that, if what I heard from them is right, if Gibbs has been set up to do, you can enhance the capacity. That one, they say, is a policy decision. You do not mm -hmm. outsource a strategic payment structure, infrastructure to another, another person. It is never done anywhere. If gifts were not in place and we were doing it, then we could strategically outsource it. What they have done, they have outsourced it. Outsourcing risk is a huge thing. It is not the money that is involved. Who supervises the data? Who monitors it? These are the issues that needs to be do critically. So, so what do you say about that when you hear look, that? When, when I you hear that, is that in our source? Yes, yes, practically, it's not the one doing this. But it's a Moroccan company. That is not true. I, I, that is I, not true. 100% true. And if he has... And there's another Haitian company. company. There's you another Haitian company. Please, there's any evidence. Please, okay. Please. Hold, on, hold, on. Us, hold, on. hold on, hold on. Let's hear Doc. Yeah. You see, Doc, sorry. what I'm saying is that if we have a platform, we need to deepen it rather than outsourcing it. People have sent in this country, they should go and ask the banks. I'm sourcing some of their, uh, to these companies and the problem they are going through, nobody has an idea. What do you do when you don't have the capacity? No, you dip in your capacity. Yes. You dip in your capacity. There you is don't nothing. have the expectation. My brother, who said that? Who said that? When the British government needed a governor, they couldn't get it from England. Where did they get it from? McCartney is an, a Canadian who ran Canadian financial system, and they never had financial crisis. So who said you cannot deepen your, 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 your capacity? Unless you don't want to deepen it, then you want to outsource it and make it easier. Strategically, I think that Gibbs should be deepened to take over this project. Forget about what we are saying. It is good to say that somebody take over. The cost is big, 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 but where do our data go? Who monitors it? Who supervises it? 
So please, let us divide the, the void of these things and look at it strategically. We are only being, at times, we become too emotional yeah. looking at issues. But that's, and, that's and the this explanation, is a this is that's a the explanation with regards to the cost, the cost of 4.6 billion, does this explanation make sense to you? you that know, this was the projection over the 25-year period. Sammy. And that what we now have is just the capex, and we do not have you know, as in Sammy. the operational costs and, and everything. Because it was a 10 key project. Let me, let me, let me land. Let me land. You, let me you, land. Let me land. you know, when yes. you're doing you're project evaluation, I'm sure, it is not true. I'm sure, uh, it honorable, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm sure yeah. honorable is a finance man. Yeah. When you're doing finance, yeah. I am, the, a, I am a finance from Z to D. When you're doing finance, cost is not even an important issue. There are other variables you have to look at. Cost will possibly be the end of it. That's why you're talking about MPV, DCF, and all those things. Discounted cash flow and net present value. This is not the issue. We shouldn't even, we should think strategic. What will be the impact of this? If we give to this outsource company, what happens? A day comes and then something happens to their data. What happens? There will be no transfer and payment systems. We are not the first country. We have already an existing infrastructure. Why don't we deep in it? When you say you, you can get competences all over the world to come and help, and I've given an example. England had to import a governor, Makani. He's not a, he's not a British. So you can go all over the world and get people to come and help you. To <coughs> the Indians will be there to help can, you. Can I, can I ask this way? Um, when you go to court, what the judges do when it is a matter President. of, when it's a civil, it's a civil case, they say they weigh the matter on the balance of probabilities. <clears throat> Which of the two explanations here sounds a lot more reasonable to you? That within the 25 years, this is what was projected to be the investment for which Simpson Switch was to recover. And now you have done just what you need, the capital expenditure you need for the, for the, for the uh, first equipment and machinery for the project. But the original thing was a 10 key project. So they were going to build, operate for that long period. Which, which is more reasonable? I'm coming, I'm coming. You see, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Sammy, thank you very much. It is not as simple as you say which one is the best thing. Because a lot of factors are not being considered. Mm. A lot of factors are not being considered. Let me make it clear. A lot of factors are. If you take in 4 point something billion, if the same 4 point six billion was given to Gibbs, couldn't they have developed it? Because I believe that internally growth is one of the ways you should look at it. Okay, so you have a problem with the policy I change. I have a problem. Okay, thank you. Koku, I have a problem. Koku, yes, the matter of the cost. And I am sure I've seen you looking at things that look like uh, those confidential documents. Not exactly. <laughs> 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 Those accepted ones. <laughs> Not yes. Yeah. I mean, from the from Ioko's <coughs> investigations and all of those things, and to come to the point that that supports the defense against what Dr. Bamia has put out. Well, well, what is believable? Well, I have incited the Ioko report. Okay. I've tried my best to procure or assess a copy uh, without I'll success. I'll pretend I believe you. <laughs> without success. OK. And I was worried about that. Mm. Uh, I tried even to, I did some checks at the AG's department. OK. And they didn't seem to have a copy. I was surprised. I checked with Yoko, and they indicated, and I won't mention the specific sources, that they submitted a report to the AG's department or office on the 11th of August, 2017. So I went back to the AG's department and indicated to them that there must be a report somewhere right. there. Mm -hmm. So they need to get it. And that's why I said I'm a bit sad. I couldn't retrieve a copy to read. Oh, interesting. Then you leave your copy with yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The source had, and I was, uh, that's why I was confused, I mean worried. The Yoko source told me something, and it's highly placed, mm. that contradicted what I was hearing people say, 
was contained in the report okay about a certain violation of procurement processes meanwhile what i was hearing amounted to there was no adverse findings yes there was not mm. yes just like you are saying mm. so i said look i need to get a copy and read for myself what is in that report now if you permit me i will proceed step by step look i am persuaded by the argument that if we have a local entity we can empower to undertake this project that's a preferable option I'm persuaded by that argument because it enhances their capacity. You empower them and they are here, they belong to us, they will be here forever and ever. But there's also one thing that is worrying and we need to cross that bridge. See, and I think the Occupy Ghana issued a statement which is dated May 16, 2018. And I think it helps us in going forward. They are requesting for some contract documents and agreements between the Bank of Ghana and the certain switch systems limited in relation to the mobile money interoperability contract. Could you have been referring to them here as we speak? Yes. Mm. This is just one it side of the coin. Mm. Occupy Ghana also said they want to be furnished and they are going under the constitution, yes. Article 21. 21. Right. 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 Finished with all relevant documents pertaining to the new contract signed with the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement Systems. Which we don't have. We need that. Mm. We do need that. In order for our discussions to be fair and mm. equitable, I think we need that. Having said that, and this is because, you see, we are talking of figures, 1, point, uh, 1 billion versus 1. Uh, 4.5 million dollars. In a vacuum, they make no sense to me. Mm. You must relate them to the projects that we are de talking about. You must relate them. So we should find the scope and coverage mm. of each of the projects and to be able to do a more comprehensive and comparative analysis. It will be fair mm. for us to do, even though I am inclined towards the second project, I still want to be a very fair person an honest broker in this matters. So we need those things. Now, checking the tender document, and this is where we need the further and better particulars of the second. I realized that the Bank of Ghana, see, there was already existing payment systems infrastructure, right. some of which have been alluded to. Yes. It said they, they had a real-time gross settlement system for high-value payments. Mm -hmm. It was under Bank of Ghana. Right. The check Codling clearing with trun truncation. This system enables the electronic clearing of checks with check images, GIFs. It was under GIFs. Yes. Automated clearing house for bulk debit and credit funds transfers. That was under GIFs. Yes. Separate C CSD exists for both government and bulk securities registration and so and so. That was under secur uh, central securities depositories. The National Interbank <coughs> Switching and Processing System, which yes. connect, that's GIFs. Yes. Participant systems located at each bank used to prepare and deliver payment instructions to the clearinghouse. That's the banks. Yes. Smart card payment system capable of online, offline and online transactions, GIPS. The mobile phone is used as a payment device which enables electronic funds transfer and payment for goods and services with preloaded funds. That is the mobile money. Yes. Yes. So this was an existing yes. infrastructure. Now, what was it that the one, the accepting switch was supposed to do? They were supposed to, and this is also here, is this the request for pro proposal is focused on software, hardware, and services required for the implementation of a mobile, a mobile payment systems infrastructure, MPSI, as a 10K project. One, overall integration of mobile payments platform of the M MNOs, that's the mobile money people in Ghana. Supply, installation, and integration of application software, hardware, infrastructure, operating systems, database, and mid middleware uh, su supporting an operational MPSI pilot. Supply of software, hardware, and implementation of functional interoperable mobile money ecosystem. Integration with Ghana's clearing and settlements facilities consistent 
uh, consisting of CCC. I don't understand mm -hmm. that. Check is, Thank you, sir. So you see the old system that uh -huh. exists. And then yeah. integration with the participant banks. Where is integration? Not mo to mobile money operators and the existing front. So, uh, so, so this is supposed to be and the new the additional yes. or the integration yes. of the old one. Yes. Yes. Now they were, and this is critical for me, it says the contract will include the following stages of delivery. Vendor mobilization period, maximum two months. Two, system implementation, maximum six months to install hardware, software, and systems infrastructure. Three, user acceptance test phase, three months. Ex extendable pending bug that's Bank of Ghana in industrial acceptance of the payment. The f f pilot fees, MPSI up and running with pilot banks and new banks, entities, and functionality added as the project progresses. The duration should be six months. So you see, timelines were given for implementation of the first project, that's the acceptance mm. project. I and you remember I said this thing here, February 18, 2017, that what I, I had been told of the 4.6 was that it was supposed to be cash flow investment that they were supposed to do for 25 years. He's referred to it. Including return, return on investment? Yes. So they were to recover. Yeah, exactly. And that's where if you read the ACE uh, analysis, it, 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 I get confused. In sense, and I'm being honest with you, that it doesn't appear that much legal competence went into the agreement. On the Ghana side, you mean? Yes. yes. On the state side? Yes. 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 That's my view. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I get an impression, even though I'm technically uh, inadequate in this matters. So to be honest with you, it would be in our interest to be able to do a serious analysis, comparative analysis, mm -hmm that we get the details. Okay. Having read these details mm. here, mm. in the absence of the, this details relative to the second project, that gives one, mm. I find it difficult to come to okay. a very firm judgment. OK. All right. that's, that's my but initial. Then, as you have read here, mm. yeah. it's the same. Okay. It's the same. It's the same. So, so no, but if it's the same, mm. then it's serious. Is it so good? And no. Just about so no, if it's the same. Just to explain something now. 30 seconds. 30 seconds just to explain something. You see, yes. if you read yes. the charges schedule. And do it quickly. We yes. need to take a Charges break. schedule mm. says that we are, literally says we are investing 4.6 billion into this thing over a period. Yeah. We will, we will agree with you on how much we have to get from it. But the minimum is that... This financial proposal that we are submitting, that says 4.6. You should allow us to re recoup that minimum 4.6 over that period. We are logged in. Yes. And, it, and even the extra 10 years, it is at their option, not ours. Yes. Which buttresses your yeah, argument? Yes, that's of, the point I'm so, making. Yeah. Uh, 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 challenge on And the last okay. point is that because all of the other components are available, if you now say do mobile money interoperability and integrate with everything else, and he now has to build a whole new system and charge you all of this money, that's when all of this mm -hmm. exists already, and the old structure can just do the mobile it's interoperability, a, a which is already point. integrated. Yeah. Very what strong are you talking point. about? Very strong Sam, point. Sam, yes. He mm. just read the school. Mm. There was nowhere that they were supposed to develop existing system in that in that in that in that scope that you indicated. They were integrate the it existing system. Integrate. Into, and so Kojo should yeah. stop talking about existing system. It is to integrate the system and get them to work. Yes, exactly. It's integrated yeah. already. Yes. No, no, banks no, are, no, they are not. They are not integrated. Banks are linked to. No, if they are integrated already, why are you? Are they they are not not say, this is a this is a line. Can I, can I, can I, can I hold on. Listen hold to on. me. Listen to me. See, hold hold on. On. The uh, was Bank of Ghana. Because which page are you reading? This is the tender document. Okay. Uh, which page? page? I think it's page the, the first page. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The first page. Go ahead. That background. Bank of Ghana seeks for the establishment of an integrated and interoperable electronic national payment system in Ghana. Mm. Now, this is the critical point. This is in line with this policy objective of averting the development of fragmented, emphasis, fragmented payment systems, which may not be efficient on liquidity and also increase the cost of payment <coughs> transactions. To this end, the Bank of Ghana requires the implementation of electronic payment infrastructure, which will connect with and complement the existing Electronic interbank payment and segment okay. systems in Ghana. Okay. Yes. okay. Yeah. So, right. so it is not yeah. to develop ATMs. new ones. No, right. no, right. no. no. there were existing ones which they were yeah. seeking to integrate. You know, okay. new you know, you know something. You see, and the existing Ghana. ones of Copa Ghana is which should be asking for all subcontracts that Gibbs has signed 
under this sure, no, no, but they've asked for it. They've asked for all of them. They've asked for all of them. They've all of them. All related to all the subcontracts. They have asked for it. They were all integrated. How much are they paying for their services? So then the figure 4.6 might appear outrageous. OK. But now it is 7.6. I'll do this I'll do this very quickly. The people are charging. They are charging the people 2.5. Thank you. Thank you. Let me do this very quickly. Sorry, sorry. Let me do this very quickly because 2.5 is what they are charging. It is true. It is true. It is true. About the, about the Iyoko investigations. What happened in that, there were allegations that were made by one of the entities that bid for the contract and lost. And there were three of them. And what were the allegations and what were the findings? I'll get to some of the highlights. So, uh, allegation A, that there was a breach of statutory duty to ensure that the tender was duly processed by the procurement unit and evaluated by the appropriate evaluation panel constituted by the head of entity. Person one to and section so so and so. This is the allegation. Okay. The investigations established that the BOG complied with its statutory duty by ensuring that the tender was duly processed by the procurement unit and evaluated by an appropriate evaluation panel. Then uh, B, the, there are other things they found but no breach. B, breach of statutory duty to review and refer to the Central Tender Review Committee for a concurrent approval of the purported award to Sipstein Switch Systems Limited in the amount of 4.6 billion, which is way over and above the permissible approval thresholds and limits of both the head of entity and the Bank of Ghana Entity Tender Committee. First one to a particular section they quoted, and this was the finding. It was established that the threshold limit for this procurement fell within the governor's approval limit, hence did not require the concurrent approval from the Central Tender Review Committee as uh, required by section so so and so. It is this point that they say the investigation established that the Bank of Ghana complied with its statutory duty in relation to approval limits and threshold. The contract was awarded by management of Bank of Ghana, that's the governor, the threshold limitation for the governor under uh, sec the second schedule of the, the law, blah, blah, um, is um, 100,000 for procurement of services. The contract price for this procurement is Ghana CDs 0, 0.00, as stated in uh, under the contract, hence false within the governor's approval limit. Then there was this allegation, C, breach of statutory duty to conduct the technical and financial evaluation of the tenders in accordance with the procedures and criteria set out in the <coughs> invitation documents. Then they refer to a particular section. They say investigations established that Bank of Ghana conducted technical and financial evaluation of the tenders in accordance with the procedures and criteria set out in the eval, uh, invitation document as highlighted in the following. And they do that. This is the final point. Mm -hmm. um, let me just run. D, breach of statutory duty to ensure that a duly constituted entity tender committee, ETC, of the Bank of Ghana at a duly convened meeting reviewed and approved the evaluation recommendations and purported award of the contract to Sifting Switch Systems Limited. Investigations established that the contract price of the contract was zero, Ghana City 0, 0.00, hence falls within the limit, I mean, a repetition of whatever had happened. And then they had this comment to make, to suggest that the one that uh, made the uh, petition did not understand the, what was being sought for and sought to put money or charge for what he wanted to do upfront for the Bank of Ghana to pay. And the Bank of Ghana didn't have that money. And therefore, it is their own misunderstanding that led to their failure, even though they quoted a lower price. Mm -hmm. All right, we take a break mm -hmm. and we'll return. So it means when they change the policy, yes. they follow the rules under their new policy guideline. That's what okay, Kojo, thank you. We'll, we'll take a break. We'll be right <laughs> back. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> but have you, is it true yeah, that the case is in... Yeah, yeah.